Life Track with Chuck Swindoll is a presentation of Insight for Living Canada. I did not learn my theology first at seminary. I learned it first at home. I learned it at the knee of my mother. As a matter of fact, I was only a preschooler when I heard my first serious theological statement. As I recall, in a frustrated moment, she made the statement which contained only 10 words, but they were memorable. May God help you if you ever do that again. <laughs> I learned at my mother's knee what the fear of God was all about. I was a teenager, however, before I asked my first serious theological question. And it wasn't at home, and it wasn't in a church, it was in a car. Let me explain. I come from a musical family. My mother, now deceased, uh, played wonderful piano and sang uh, lyrical soprano. She had a wonderful voice. In fact, she taught piano for over 30 years. My sister sang um, contralto and still sings beautifully. My brother sings bass, and I sang tenor. It sounds like a country western tune, and I give you that description, doesn't it? We used to stand around the piano, and my mother would play. My father played a great harmonica. Most hymns don't have that written in the score, so he sort of picked what was left out. And we made scary music for years together as a family. <laughs> um, one fall, early one fall, my mom noticed in the Houston press one afternoon that there was a, a concert that would be given at the downtown First Methodist Church under the direction of the great uh, Walter Jenkins, who had led the uh, masterwork of, of George Frederick Handel for years. In fact, he had it memorized. Um, he was to direct a choir that was to be a volunteer choir, and we were to audition if we wanted to be a part of that 350 voice choir. We all auditioned, and to everyone's surprise, we made it. I will never forget the uh, night of the first performance. And then we stood for the first piece, which goes, and the glory the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And I don't know that I got more than about 10 notes out before I dissolved in tears. I rode home that evening in the back of the car. My dad was so thrilled to have had us all in the performance, and my brother and sister and mother were talking of it. I was very quiet. I was struggling with the word. In fact, I asked the question, what is that glory? I could understand a bit power and riches and wisdom, but glory, what is that? It was about um, 12, 13 years later, I was in my second year at Dallas Seminary under the very capable instruction of Dr. Bruce Walkey, and in a Hebrew course that was tough. And yet, I did a quick flashback to my year when I was 15 in that car as Dr. Walkey was going over a particular word he discovered and amplified for us out of Isaiah's prophecy, and it was kabod, K-A-B-O-D, for heaviness. And he struck a chord in my mind when he said, and this is the word for glory. 376 times used in the Hebrew Scriptures, 45 of those times, and rightly so, used only of our God, who is the King of glory. My heart leaped within me. The King of heaviness, the heaviest of all the heavies. We live in a day that's marked by shallow concepts of God. We've lost our sense of reverence. God has become our pal, our understanding buddy. But God is holy. He is the only wise God, the creator, the maker, the sovereign and glorious Lord, worthy of all our praise and worship. This is Steve Johnson, of Insight for Living Canada. Listen to more of Chuck Swindoll's Lifetrack messages at lifetrack.ca. Lifetrack, where life and truth meet. The preceding Lifetrack presentation was brought to you by Insight for Living Canada. 
the original message, ministry, movement, or monument, was copyrighted in 1989, and this life track sound recording was copyrighted in 2012 by Charles R. Swindoll Incorporated. All rights are reserved worldwide.